Can you please tell us, you know, what your name is and what your job? Uh, my name is Mike McGee. I am creative director of Framestore, a post-production stroke production uh, video film studio. Okay. Um, can you take us your journey from start to finish, you know, what you studied, how you, how you came to founding Framestore, you know, and, you know, what it's become today? Uh, I studied graphic design at art school. I did that for three years and my portfolio was made up of all my interests in design. That included uh, animation, photography, illustration, typography. And in fact, I nearly applied to Ravensbourne to do the information design course because at the time when I was in university, this was the best place to study information design. When I finished my degree, uh, which I did in my hometown in uh, Newport in Wales. My folder had a selection of work in it which showed me to be a jack of all trades, master of none. And so my head of course said what you should really do is find another course to go to and he suggested that I apply for an MA in London. So I moved to London, um, applied for a place at St Martin's. There were seven places on the MA then in the days when they actually gave you a grant I qualified for a student grant and studied for four terms doing an MA in computer graphics. There wasn't a course structure. I wrote my own uh, course, if you like, and I said I wanted to study computer graphics. It didn't really exist back then, and the lecturers said, well, what is computer graphics? And I said, well, if you let me do the course, I will discover what it is and then inform other students through my research and my, uh, the, the evidence of and body of work I put together that will help other students to then use computers in design. I worked on a machine called an Artron back then. It was, uh, there was LetraSet, if anybody remembers LetraSet, rubbing um, uh, letter typography uh, off a vinyl sheet onto um, artwork, onto lith, uh, lith and clear transparent film. And that company produced a computer that could do that process, but also put typography over the top of photographs. I learned how to use that on my course, but the manual that came in, it was this bumper-sized thing that was full of hieroglyphics. So I used my course to design a manual that was made for design students or people with an, uh, an, uh, a visual mind rather than a technical mind to use a computer. When I came out, of college, finishing my masters, there was then a shortage of, of people, of designers that could use technology, and technology was really just taking off around that time, with pop videos like Dire Straits Money for Nothing, where people were scribbling on top of video, frame by frame, and Framestore really was set up uh, with uh, three other friends on the back of buying the first frame store, a, a storage device for storing frames. Uh, where you could save a batch of frames and then scribble on them frame by frame. That was the start of Framestore back in 86. The four of us started in a, in a small room working on pop videos and TV commercials. And here we are now, almost 28 years later, with a staff of over 700 people uh, based in four cities across the world and continuing to grow and work in more and more areas of content creation, not just film and commercials, but multi-platforms. Okay. Um, so can you run us through, you know, what potentially is a normal, a normal day at work for you? And if there is no such thing as a normal day, then uh, what do you do most of the time as creative director of Framestore? Okay. As creative director of Framestore, my job on a day-to-day -day basis, it will, I'll get involved in everything from the signage on the front window, uh, uh, the colour of um, the, the, the tablecloths in the kitchen. I, 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 get, I get involved with anything that's visual and that is Framestore. I also work on, um, I direct for Framestore. So in my latest uh, role, I've directed f six commercials in the last two years. Um, so I work straight with brands and clients. I also supervise projects for other directors, so I'll go out on location with a director and help them capture the footage or material um, so that the, the effects can be produced properly back in post. 
when uh, a director has shot a commercial, I will then often supervise a team of animators or a team of compositors to get the best results from the uh, images we've captured and then deliver those either back to a director or back to a, a brand um, as a finished product. Um, on a daily basis, that, that can involve looking at several projects at once. So I might be, I might be on something we shot a month ago that's a longer term, uh, that's a longer delivery date. Uh, based on something that's a fast turnaround that just needs a quick edit and some caption put on. So I'm, I'm multitasking across uh, different projects and really getting involved in any pitch work we do as a company and also coming to colleges like this and doing presentations or going to agencies and doing presentations, reminding everyone that we're, we're here to collaborate and do creative work and to, to come and work with Framestore. So could you, uh, can you tell us about the Framestore internships and tips? What, what, uh, what areas does it cover? Uh, the Framestore internships covers whatever, I mean it changes every year. Because we have a, a supply and demand pro problem always, we're always looking for talented people to join us. And really the end internships are an opportunity for us to, to bolster up a division of the company that needs talent. So we're constantly looking for talented people. If we find the right person, we, we, we've taken engineers, for example, as interns before. They don't have to just be uh, artists or creative people. They can actually be engineers, uh, software people. Um, and at the moment, we're looking for creative technologists. So really, it's people coming to us with the right skill set that fits the need we have at that time. So to, to, to answer the question about what we take every year, it, it changes every year. And if we, but I would say if you want to apply for an internship, you should apply with whatever skill set you have, mm. and hopefully that will match up with what we're looking for. But we're looking for, for skilled, motivated people that, um, that can add value to what we do. Um, and what makes a stand out show real? Uh, what if you were starting out with not much to show? What would really stand out? Okay, I think. The thing about a showreel and making yourself stand out, it really comes down to what your demons, what what job you're applying to. So I, I use the example of an animator. We often get animators reels come in, and they have very beautifully lit models in a lovely environment, but the animation content of what they're showing is very minimal. What our I know that what our senior Anima animators are looking for in junior animators is quality animation. So I would say we chuck all that stuff away, get a stick man out, and show a stick man walking, tripping over, standing, s self, standing up, brush himself down, pick up something really heavy like a pair of shopping bags, do something that really shows off your skills as an animator, because that's what will employ someone um, on not just the quality and really not the quality of the lighting and the quality of the environment so whatever job you're applying for if you're a compositor show the best piece of compositing you can push yourself to make something look very real don't over stylize something try and make it a seamless composite and then if you can explain the way that you've achieved that the other thing we're looking for are people that are good communicators so being able to explain even if your shot doesn't look great why it doesn't look great and what you need to do to make it great will be very beneficial to you because people will understand that you either haven't got the time or the technology to, to finish it anymore but you understand exactly what needs to be done because what we're looking for uh, in the visual effects side of the company is people with uh, a good eye and whether that's a good eye for animation or a good eye for uh, uh, photography and what makes uh, something look real, that's what will make you stand out is being a good communicator. Okay. Um, <coughs> so some questions, you know, aside from students and uh, internships. The moment you saw Frame Store's credits placed underneath the talents uh, for Gravity, uh, how did that feel? How, you know, with how the, the FX industry is currently not not getting as much recognition as it deserves. How did that feel for not just Framesaw, but for you as a, you know, as a member of the FX community to see that there? Well, so seeing Framestore's name come up beneath the, the talent uh, obviously gives you an enormous sense of pride. Uh, and, it, and actually everybody got very excited about it because we're finally being recognized for the job we do. 
but in a way that's almost that's almost sad that we're we're getting excited because our names are where they should be yeah. so it feels like we're we're duly being rewarded for the contribution we make to the success of the film and the quality of the film's images i think what's what's reinforced it is as much when alfonso and david hayman the producer are up at the bafta awards they're shouting out frame store's name as well it's not just the credits of the movie and the fact now that the recognition is is coming for the contribution we're making is enormously satisfying but but it feels like it's 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 about time um you were saying with children of men that the final scene with the baby took nine months to technically conceive when it was all said and done did you uh you know in a kind of in a funny kind of way did you feel like a father when you'd finally when the company had finally birthed this uh, photorealistic child for this final shot of the film. <laughs> yes, the, the, the birth of the child in, in Children of Men, it, uh, as I say, it took us nine months to deliver. So I think that everybody that worked on the shot felt like they had gone through childbirth to deliver that baby. Interestingly, the, the shot, which is one continuous three and a half minute take, um, the girl that delivers the baby in the film has not given she's never had a child so she had a we had a midwife on set giving her performance advice about how to breathe and uh, what she should be doing um, and Alfonso did I think he did 14 takes of that shot and if you can imagine doing that three and a half minute take 14 times we didn't finish till nine or ten o'clock in the evening and of course the take that's used in the film is the 14th take so that girl the performer was genuinely exhausted by the end and and when the final that's a wrap came she felt like she delivered a baby I think no that's brilliant um, with uh, with uh, frame stores uh, how it's a how it started as a post-production company and now it's a it's multi-platform it's you know it spread its wings everywhere um, do you find that the there is some difficulty when you're trying to navigate uh, workflows between um, different areas of media. So you know, you you work in commercials, TV, film, uh, web design. Um, I know that Prince has done some games as well. Like, uh, is the like I know the workflows. You know, once you get them set up, they're probably easy and probably set. But do you find as creative director, because uh, as you said, you multitask, you cover each project. Do you find sometimes it's a bit overwhelming? You know. I think I, I think the because of all the different um, areas that we work in, we have to have a very structured uh, system for tracking everything, and that system we've invested over the years. And so things like uh, a tool that we use called Shotgun, where we review um, shots, is used in film and it's used in commercials and it's now used in our multi-platform work. And it's a way that anybody in the company can also go in and look at any shots anyone else is working on in the company. So as we've grown and we've entered new areas, we've been very uh, cautious and careful to make an, an asset library that we can put things into that mean if uh, an object is made for a, a scene in a film, the commercials guys can access that object and use it at a lower resolution in a TV commercial. And also then for, for interactive work, we're currently working on making 3D characters that we create like Dobby and Creature for the Harry Potter movies. Our challenge that we've set ourselves is how can we make that into a real-time interactive character for the web? So we have to write, yes, we have to write new software and we have to use games technology to, to make that happen. But the same brains that are sitting around the table working out how to do gravity are the same brains that are thinking, right, how do we apply that, the tech and the knowledge that we've accu uh, uh, accumulated here into these other areas. So the same thinking power, the same problem solving is going on throughout the company and it's that shared knowledge, that, that shared learning that gives power and strength to the whole of, of Framestore. I'm not sure if that's quite answered your <laughs> question fully, but um, uh, managing it and tracking it, we do have tools in place that, that have been built, um, customized especially for us to do it. A lot of those tools we write ourselves because they're not things you can buy as, um, off the shelf. So even if we do buy a, an off the shelf tool, we'll often customize it to our specific needs. 
but it's very important for us to be efficient and to be able to reuse assets to not let things slip through the gaps or get undiscovered and, and because the company is of such a huge scale just knowing that you need an animated squirrel on a project over here and someone did a test for a film that never got used and that's an asset that's over here keeping everybody communicating that these things are work in progress and things that can be accessed is co something that we're constantly working on um, keeping information and communication open across the company is, is a, an ongoing challenge um, some would say you know you've reached the dream you, you own one of the large one of the, one of the largest uh, you know, production companies in the world you know it is known for its visual effects department it is known worldwide but do you still have a dream is there still something you're working towards you know you said you're a director is there a film uh, potentially an adaptation you want to direct or is there you know something uh, a photorealistic you know uh, creation you want your FX department to create is there still like what is what is your dream still to go I think from now I think as you've said I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I've started this company that's been very successful and we live at the cutting edge of technology where we're constantly taking on those projects that other people are, are aren't able to or, or uh, maybe we're fortunate enough that we have so much experience that we get we get first choice at those really challenging shows but we we constantly strive to make the impossible possible and with that as our philosophy if you like knowing what I would like to do next is is never really within my remit it's always where's the next challenge um, and whether it is creating a character I get as excited creating something in real time for the web as I do about working out how to solve gravity which is going to take four years um, and the rewards come in in the the production of these of these um, fantastic images uh, if you produce something bizarrely for the web it can, can quite often reach a much bigger audience than the people that have that will go and see gravity um, so to me um, as long as I'm working on challenging projects uh, working on the most creative things possible and at least being considered um, as a vendor for those projects I'm, I'm really happy I, I love the fact that I keep learning all the time every project teaches me something new on gravity I've learned a whole lot of science that I, I hated science in school but I've learned a whole lot of new stuff by doing that I learn stuff about biology and, and human anatomy from the animation stuff that we do where we, we dissect creatures to build the muscle tissues beneath their skin so I'm learning stuff there and of course working because we're very fortunate that we work alongside very creative people the whole filmmaking process is very collaborative you no one person can do it on their own Alfonso himself is the first person to say that it's the team he builds around him that made gravity such a success and I think that uh, for me, it's all about the team, it's all about the people I meet, and it's, it's as rewarding coming here and showing students um, the possibilities uh, and get them excited about the industry to feel what I feel that uh, makes me feel good about what I do.